What's going on guys? Welcome back to Season 10, the final season of my NHL 22 Ottawa Sanders Franchise Mode Series. As you guys can see, we're 4-2 in the preseason. Tim Stuchel there, 8 points in 6 games. Uh, quick spoiler warning guys, if you missed the last episode, go check it out. But last year we finally won our first Stanley Cup. It was a long road to get there, it took 9 years. It was our third President's Trophy as well. Our second Prince of Wales, we actually won it back to back. Finally taking on the Stanley Cup. Felt good. I think our team was definitely good enough to win it before now, but obviously you got to get lucky in the playoffs, Sim, and we just simply were not. So, very happy about that. Hopefully, we could go back to back here to end the franchise. That'd be pretty awesome. Definitely have the team to do it. Kachuk, Cooley, Capaduka on the first line, plus five. Line A, Fantilli, Stutzla also getting a plus five. Helm here's a rookie we traded for. We're actually, we drafted him after we traded for the third overall pick. 1879 of the draft, tons of X factors. He's kind of a good all-around player too, so he should fit on the third line there. He's playing with two very good players in Norris and Batherson. Fourth line, Saron Noel, Andy Bonvi, Liam Foody. The fourth line there is brand new. Now defensively here, we did lose Nemich, but we brought in Balamaki to replace him. Getting a plus one on the top pair of Drysdale as Sanderson Shabak at plus five on the second pair. So um, even though Shabak's playing a bit less, he's going to be playing like a 96. So I feel like that's okay. Uh, Byers Heronic there, bottom pair is also pretty good. Goaltending wise, Foot's now an 88. So he won the starting job. He's just too high rated not to have starting. I don't like the 66 poise on him, but I'm hoping the rest of his stats kind of make up for it. Uh, even Potolo there, backing up 81, isn't too bad. Now in terms of the special teams, you get a plus five, plus three on the four man. Both power plays here get a plus five. You can see the first one's all 91 plus players. Like even the second's very, very good. PK, plus five, plus two. I've got Helm on the first PK. So hoping he plays well there. Three man, there's a couple zeros. It's weird how like X factors rule all. You can see Helm does not fit the PK. He's got an X, but because he got all these X factors, it doesn't matter. Still gonna get a plus five. Now in terms of the HL team, they also won the Calder Cup. We actually won both NHL and AHL championships. Um, Light, Stan Coven, Sierra's a nasty first line. Fitted check and Donato on the second line. Both in the 80s. Hamnick there, perfect shot, 90 passing. Also playing with them. I mean, you got Dylan Strom, 80 overall, third line center AHL. Like we're definitely deep. Uh, defensively, 80 overall summers, a lot of high 70s. Goaltending isn't as good as it's been in the past, but uh, Pronger's a 76 there, which really isn't too bad. So we should be okay. Uh, no change of captaincy. Kachuk throwing the C with both Shabbat and Batson wearing A's. So I'll show you guys our ratings here before we get started with the final season simulation. We've got 100 offense, 98 defense, 85 goaltending. So Hopefully this team plays well. Uh, if I can, definitely make a move at the deadline to you know go for it all. It's the final year. I try not to go coo crazy, like trade you know first round picks five years away. But apart from that, definitely gonna do everything I can to improve this team. So let's get started. And throughout December now, guys, we're playing very very well. 28 six and one. Definitely looking like the defending Stanley Cup champions. 57 points so far. Have this first place in the NHL. Brady Kachuk having an unreal year. He's got 49 and 35. And quick look at the HL team here. Stan Coven over a point per game is our leading scorer. And our team's got 49 points, which actually has them second in the HL. And so now the trade deadline here, guys, with a record of 47, 13, and 3. We're continuing to crush it. I think we're first place in the NHL. I'll have to double check. Uh, Capaduca now leading scorer, 79 and 63. I mean, we've got almost 100 points there at the deadline, 97. Yeah, uh, next closest is the Predators with 80, which is still really good, but we are just dominating right now. AHL wise, Donato over a point per game is our lean score. AHL team's got 80, which doesn't have them first in the HL, but is first in the division, so I'll take that. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to try and make some moves here at the deadline to just bolster our team if I can. Um, I would look to maybe, you know, trade Valimaki for like a superstar defenseman if we can. Frank Nazar there, Pierre Luc Dubois, Perrot, Johnny Beecher. Jake Bean, Tyson Forster, uh, Semenov, Ty Smith, Manji Pani, Philip Forsberg. Okay, so I think, you know, offensively we're probably fine. I do want to actually take a look at our goaltending situation because last year as the backup, Foot didn't do that great. We did have a really good AHL season before that. 0.903, 2.88. Yeah, that's actually pretty solid. Uh, it's very goaltending than we got last year. So I think we're fine there, especially like an 88 making under a million dollars. You're not going to get better than that. So... Um, like I said, we're just kind of looking for a good deal here um, in terms of draft picks Actually have a good amount of draft picks to work with. I'm not going to trade anything past 2032 I feel like that'd be you know too cheap knowing the franchise is ending So we'll see what's out there. So the first trade I'm trying to make here guys is an improvement to our defense Even though we're actually going down in rating um, Adam Pellick here 81 overall, but you can see tons of X factors. You got the quick pick zone ability uh, should be like a chemistry boost for our bottom pair It does say he should fit there as well as PK lines 88 D awareness I'm offering up Heronic, who's technically better, but uh, D-Burnus is lower, doesn't have the X-Factor, so I feel like Pelic 
if he does give us the boost in the bottom pair, it's worth it. Giving up a unsigned medium starter goalie who's 56 at 20, not great in a third round pick. It's really you know a pretty even trade here. I feel like honestly maybe we can keep the third round. Just kind of looking at it there. I'll try in a fourth round here instead. I was gonna mention too, we got about three million dollars in cap space, so this is gonna add you know one and a half or so. And the Flyers say yes. Okay, so. Not done quite yet. There's a couple other moves I'd like to make. And next year, guys, we're going to get traded Seattle Kraken for Philip Broberg on the block. 85 overall D-man. Going to have him on the bottom pair, probably with Adam Pellick. So just kind of redoing that bottom pair. Really did with a solid top six. D, 89D awareness there. Good all-around defenseman. Offering up buyers who isn't too bad, but he's 81 at 23. So I feel like in terms of, you know, trading away a prospect or anything, Broberg makes a lot more sense. And we're adding Engel here, who has medium top six potential, but only 55 at 18. He probably doesn't end up being like a superstar or anything. So we'll see what the Kraken say to this. Trade's accepted. Okay, so I feel like those are a couple of nice moves for us. And next year, guys, we're going to get another big trade in New York Islanders for John Beecher. 89 overall. I think he'll actually be a third line left winger for us. You can see there, solid shot. But most importantly, the 93D awareness, 99 offense awareness. Uh, should just be kind of a good all-around help to the team. Bombi here's not a bad player. 84 overall. He's actually got 90 accuracy. I didn't realize that. For some reason, I thought it was 90 power. 90 passing as well. Good D awareness. But... He's playing fourth line. I feel like we can get John Beecher in. It makes a lot of sense. Humphrey here, decent prospect. We have a lot of good forwards. A second, two fourths. Let's we'll see what the Islanders say. The value's pretty equal. Trades rejected. Okay, so um, one thing we could do is just make this a third. Um, I think in that case, though, I saw I actually had an extra fourth rounder next year. We'll do that. Second, third, fourth. Trade still rejected. Okay, so I did see that they had a defense when they liked of ours. Wasn't anything crazy. Holmes, 2173. Um, I think we could do this and then maybe add like a second round pick this year that extra fourth I have in 2032 this is a big package I feel like they should say yes now wow trade is still rejected um, I mean if we're going for it a second a third are you kidding me okay so I really didn't want to have to use 2032 picks unless like I absolutely had to so maybe we'll try a first round pick in 2032 instead of second this year but we'll have to include that third they still say no, running out of time, eight minutes left. A first, a second, a medium top six, a medium top four, and Bombi, who's a good player, for John Beecher. Wow. I don't really know. <laughs> I feel like that was actually a really good offer. I'm not, I don't know. Um, we could trade like light there or somebody. Trade the lines up. Yeah, I thought that was a very good offer. Honestly, surprised they said no, but that's okay. We kind of like revamped our defense, which I thought, you know, bomb pair D was probably weakest spot on the team. So in terms of trades, Alex Delaney there goes to the Dallas Stars, Dante Favreau to the Kings, our trade for Broberg and Pellick, uh, Bjorkstrand to the Lightning, Dermot there to the Kings, Ben Wallavier Gruel to the Oilers, uh, Robbie Fabry there to the Blue Jackets, Hogner there to the Hurricanes, Sorokin to the Sharks, Heshi to the Blue Jackets along with Ogren for a first round pick, that's a pretty big trade at the end. So after the trade deadline guys, here's an updated look at the team. Of course, forward lines have not changed to look very solid. Now I did actually think about changing Bastion and Fantilli. Get an extra plus two on the third, but Fantilli's having a better season, so I feel like we'll just leave it that way. Also, Fantilli is higher rated. Now, defensively, kind of surprising. I've got Adam Pellick on the top pair with Jamie Drysdale. They get a plus five, so Drysdale's playing like a 95 now. Pellick like an 86. It actually makes him higher than Val Mackey and Broberg. You can see, unfortunately, get a minus one, but they're still 284, which is better than we had before. And, of course, Drysdale's down 95. Top five. We get plus five on the top four, which I really like. Um, in terms of the special teams, I think four man's the same. Power play actually brought in Norris for Fantilli. I noticed he had a bit better hands and like shot was a bit more accurate, just less powerful. And PK, I've got Pellick playing here as well. So we actually get plus five on both. Also the second three man's a plus five. So I think you know who's definitely worth it just for that X Factor bonus. It's kind of dumb, I know, kind of unrealistic how player, even though he's older now, drop in rating, gives us all these boosts just because uh, he used to, you know, be a star, have the X Factors. But that's the way it is. So hopefully, you know, those trades help our team out. We'll see how we do here in the last month and a half or so. And we're now in the season here, guys. The record is 62, 15, and 5. I think this is our best regular season yet. Like, that is insane. 129 points in the year. Yeah, like, I'm almost positive that we have not put up 62 wins in this Ottawa franchise. AHL team there, 52, 26, and 4. Won their division, but did not win the AHL. There's a couple teams there, actually, with higher point totals. So, yeah, our team did incredible. Capaduca, 
109 points, 82 games. Now this is big, guys, as I believe the regular season point record for an Ottawa Snyder player is 105 points, which Capoduca just beat. He also put up 60 goals, and I remember looking at Danny Heatley's 1507 was also the goal record. So in the final year, Capoduca sets a couple records. That's awesome. Kachuk also actually beat the point record, 106. I think it was Heatley as well with the 105 points. So that's crazy. Two guys there with 100 plus points. Love seeing them go off like that. Logan Cooley, 99. Wow. So, I mean, for a two-way guy having basically 100 points, that's crazy. Line in 93. That's also very solid, especially second line only getting 60 minutes a night. Like the first line there, 22, 20, 20. Um, Stutzle, 89. Fantilli, 73. Shabbat at 70 points, plus 40. He has a chance, I think, for the Norris. We'll have to see if, you know, other defensemen went crazy. Drysdale, 66. Sanderson, 52. Batherson, and Norris there. Norris, 40. Batherson, almost 50. I mean, I'll take that. As I mentioned, Bombi, a pretty good player. Like, 33 points there. Less than 9 minutes a night. Not bad. The rookie, honestly, I'm a bit disappointed by. He's only got 23 points. I'm wondering if it makes sense to put Bombi on the third line. Bastard and Norris wouldn't get the plus 1 boost, but uh, he's just such a better offensive player. Valimaki there. Broberg. I mean, they put up 20 points. and Not too bad. Um, Adam Pellick there. 13 points for a defensive defenseman. I mean, it's fine. Foot here at 50 wins. I feel like he's got a chance at the Vezina. 0.904, 2.82. Very impressive as well. In terms of the AHL team, Stan Coben, 91. Uh, like their 89. Did he drop to a 78 or was already there? Uh, Vidicek, 89. Donato, 80. So four guys, you know, around a point per game or better. Strom, Sierra, Solid, Brown, Ledecker, Hamnick, 45 goals. Take a look at their goaltending. Uh, 0.899 and 2.74. For a guy that's just kind of left over, honestly, not bad at all. And we'll take a look at the entire league here, see how he did. McDavid 119 wins Yard Ross, followed by his buddy Dry Saddle. Shane Wright on the Kraken. Capaduca fourth in scoring. Kind of crazy, honestly. Um, Kachuk there was eighth. Take a look at goals. Capaduca's 60 is not good enough for Mr. Shard. Osborne guy at 64. Defensively here, Quinn Hughes 94 points plus 45. So unfortunately, no Norris for Shabbat. If Quinn Hughes didn't exist this season, I feel like he definitely would have gotten over McCarr with the plus 40 compared to plus 2. But wow, Quinn Hughes. Surprised he's only in 92, but Carr's at 96. Jeez, and I mean, look at Drysdale there. He was fifth for defensive scoring as well. Simon Nemich here with the St. Louis Blues. <sighs> yeah, I can't believe he left our team, honestly. Rookie skaters, wow. Sebastian Albright here, name looks familiar. He was actually a former first round pick of ours 2028. He's on the Bruins. And where is our guy? Wow, he's so far down. I mean, I knew he wouldn't probably be winning the Calder Trophy, but I was hoping he'd do better than that. Foot of the most wins by quite a bit, 50 wins. Save percentage for a starter. Uh, Wesley here on the ass, 0.908. 80 overall, I don't get that at all. Like, how do these random goalies do well? Wallstedt actually makes sense. And then goals against here. For a starter, Foots is the best. So, I feel like with the 50 wins, you know, Foots should be winning the Vesna. In terms of the entire league here, guys, obviously we finished first place. 21 point lead in the Preds. We almost had an 80 win percentage there, which is ridiculous. Five teams with 100 plus points. And the top six, oh no, Edmonton got screwed there. Buffalo um, getting as the 17. Last in the NHL is the Boston Bruins, 52 points. Geez, rough year for them. First in goals, four we are. And we're also first in goals again. So, foot there will be getting a William and Jennings as well. And speaking of Buffalo, guys, that is the first team we're playing here. Now, before I show you their lines, I do want to make a change here. I'm hoping it works out. So, I'm going to put Helm on the fourth line here. Uh, Noel can stay right wing. We'll have Foody in the middle. I just feel Bonvi there with 90 passing, the 90 shot, 92 offense awareness even. He probably helps us out more. I was hoping Helm would honestly grow more during the season than he did, end up being like an 83 or something. But that was not the case. So hopefully that's a good move for us. If we get knocked out in the first round, I know someone's going to say how oh, that was a stupid move and it cost me, which really that shouldn't be that drastic. It should just give us like a slight edge if anything. Uh, Quentin Musty, Dylan Cousins, Jack Quinn first line, that's sick. Uh, they even have Savoy on the second line with Fiala. Andrew Kropp there, third line center. He's just on our team. Uh, Stillman here up to an 85. Defensively, Dallin and Power. Nasty top pair. I'm surprised Power never like grows more than that. Um, I did actually give him a recent bump though, so maybe he'll start to get to a 90 with like good stats or whatever. Ukepek Lek in there, only 85. This Weber guy back in the lab, 83. Okay, so Buffalo Sabres were definitely better than on paper, but uh, I'm not going to get cocky at all. We know from this, you know, 10 year franchise that uh, anything can happen in the playoffs. As you guys see right there, 6-2 loss and a 5-4 OT loss. The 65-win Presence Trophy winning Ottawa Senators going up against the worst playoff team in the Sabres. <laughs> Down 0-2. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Backs against the wall. We have to reverse sweep them. Up one, Sanderson. Can we hold on? <laughs> it's going to OT. Comfort. I, I'm not even going to look. Eyes closed. I'm opening them right now. Logan Cooley, OT hero. We do not get swept in the final franchise. That is a good sign. <laughs> the fact, um, I don't know how we're even at this spot. <laughs> Whatever. So, I mean, you guys can, I'm just, I'm beside myself. 2-1. Line naked Chuck. I don't even know who that is for them. 4-3. to three. Wow, what a period. Cop scores on us, of course. Former player. Musty Cantor, Capaduca for us. This could be all she wrote here, guys. We're down 1. Rouse shooting them by <laughs> double. Fantilli ties it. 31 shots to 14. Capaduca there, let's go. 35 shots to 15. We have 20 more shots than them. Like, our defense is playing well. What? Are you kidding me? Dalene had a score there. They got, what? I think they had 15 shots at the start of the period. Then it was 17. So, Foot let in one of two goals. It's got to be the poise, even though he's 88 overall, which makes no sense. Here we go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Power, I mentioned how he should be higher rated, puts us out. What was... I need to see that there before I end it. 40 shots to 18, and we lose. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Look at that. Presence Trophy winner. At least we got a Stanley Cup last year, because as you guys saw there, like the playoffs are just a joke. Logan Cooley. 7-5, he played well. I'm really curious to see, was it Foote's fault? Can we blame it on him? I mean, could Chuck Norris, Sanderson there, all point per game or plus? So, I think the third line was working. Because, yeah, Norris had 6, Bathson had 4. Um, how much did, what's his name, had? He only had a point, but I think the other guy, I haven't even seen him yet. Yeah, Helm had 0. So, goalie's foot. Oh, my goodness. Averaged 4 goals against a .843. Yeah. The 66 points, I think, did us in. Even though he's got 95 stick, like a 90 glove there. I mean, what the heck? That sucks. And so our Constellation Prize, guys, is the AHL Playoffs. We actually swept the Syracuse Crunch. Maybe we can go undefeated throughout the AHL Playoffs. We got the Utica Comets up next. 2-2, uh, 3-2, two, 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 two. We beat them in six. No undefeated, but I'll definitely take moving on. Uh, we now have the Bridgeport Islanders there. That's I apologize to Islanders fans. That's got to be like the ugliest AHL logo. We beat them in five. And we now have the Tucson Roadrunners. Okay, so... Let's see what happens the first four games. Um, it's 2-2. Two to two. Interesting. And... Oh, wow, it went down to seven games. And we win another Calder Cup. This AHL team's nasty. I didn't know if this team, honestly, this year was good enough. That's crazy to see. I don't know if you guys noticed that the Columbus Blue Jackets won the Cup. Uh, Bjorn Light there, point per game. Very, very cool. Can we actually take a look at the awards yet? Sometimes we'll show it, but it's like locked for an extra day. Okay, we can. Blue Jackets win the Cup. Of course, we got our fourth President's Trophy there in five years. One Stanley Cup to show for it. Winnipeg Jets back-to-back -back Clarence's Campbells, but no cup. That's tough. And, of course, you know, we had two Prince of Wales there. Did St. Louis win a cup? Either of the years they went? They did win one, okay. Um, individual here, McDavid, Art Ross. Brady Kachuk, though, gets the Hart Trophy in his final season. That's awesome. Very cool to see that. Quinn Hughes back-to-back -back Norris. McDavid, Lady Bing. Gerby Calder, Kamel Con smythe Vesna did go to foot, so that's cool. Also got the Leon Jennings Trophy. Samirkov there, Bill Masterton. Seattle coach Jack Adams. Benir Selkie. And Kachuk also got the Ted Lindsay. Wow, most outstanding player. Osborne Richard Shard. What did Kachuk do? To, he must have had a crazy plus minus because on his own team, Kapo Dukov had more points. And then McDavid had the most points in the league. Osborne had the most goals. That's an interesting one, but I'm obviously happy with it. Um, as you can see there, <laughs> we got the three-peat. Back to back to back. Call the cuffs to end up the franchise. Uh, we also won, like, you know, so many other of the, like, HL awards. I mean, we've won our division the last five straight years. Eastern Conference playoff there. Individually, Filatov most points. Uh, a lot of these guys were just straight up not going to know. Vidicek, MVP of the playoffs. And, okay, that's actually the only player award we got. So I do want to double check here. What did Brady Kachuk do? Plus 64. It had to be that. Game winning goals, nine. Capaduka had more. Uh, Capaduka had more just regular goals in general. 
a uh, decent amount of penalty minutes. It wasn't like he was low on that. I feel like it had to be his plus minus. And yeah, look at that. He had the best plus minus in the league. While also being the 8th highest score. So kind of cool to see that. He was just the guy with the most points. Although, you don't want to rely too heavily, I'd say, on the plus minus. Uh, before I you know, resume any more, I do want to take a look at the coaching staff. It'll kind of give us an idea of our whole 10 years. So head coach there actually ended up being A plus everything, but coach influence was A. Coach influence usually is the most important stat. Um, look at the awards. One Stanley Cup, four presidents, trophies. Again, very unlucky in the playoffs there. And of course we were building like the first few seasons. So after we got done with that, we basically dominated the NHL. Unfortunately, just you know, couldn't turn into really into playoff success. I can see there, win percentage 62.3, I think is very good. Uh, team fit, all this other stuff. Doesn't really matter, but uh, cool to see it nevertheless. I mentioned to you guys the record book as well. We will take a look at that. So in terms of the all-time records, we did not set any because Daniel Albertson was simply not going to be touched. Now looking at the season records here, as I mentioned, check that out. Capaduca now has the goals and points record. And as I said too, uh, Kachuk would beat the points as well. D.D. Keeley, of course, at 1507 with 105 points. Rookie here, unfortunately, no, we did not set anything. And last I checked, we didn't have any game records, but okay. I was hoping like, you know, Capaduca went off or something this year. I mean, four goals. We saw Perfetti have four goals on us, so... Um, if we tie it, I'm guessing you have to break it to probably have it show you instead of them. Now we can take a look here too at the entire NHL just to see if, you know, any new names came up. Obviously last season we took a look at Crosby. Matthews is fifth now on the all-time goals list. Kind of cool to see that. Wins, Fleury finished second. Uh, shoutouts there, Fleury's not on it. 50 goal seasons, Ovechkin 10. Didn't he just put up like his, what, ninth in real life? So he wants to slow down there a lot. Matthews has seven. 100 point season, David 12, he's actually closing in on Gretzky, that's kind of nuts. So there you have it guys, that's our franchise. I think this was a story of a great team that for whatever reason just could not get done in the playoffs. I'm really just going to chalk it up to bad luck because at the end of the day, that's pretty much all it was. I'm uh, going to wait here to see, you know, that little pop up that lets us know the franchise is all done. It's a legendary thing, you know, EA has for you when you finish a 10 season franchise. Islanders there, jump from 11 to 1. The first overall pick. Few retired players here. John Tavares retires in the last year. Mark Stone, Mark Tso, Savannah Jad. You know what I'm realizing, guys? I actually don't think I said to 10 years. I think I said to more. That way I could like make sure I could see everything, which I'm realizing now. Um, all Mark there also retires. So um, there you have it, guys. That is our franchise. Also, guys, I'm going to have a poll of both of my YouTube and Twitter asking me which team I should be for my next franchise mode series. The options are the Buffalo Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, Montreal Canadiens, or a fantasy draft team, as those seem to be the top four response on the last episode. So if you want your voice heard, go and vote on that poll. But that's going to do it, guys, for this video and the series. Thank you guys so much for all the support on it. It really means a lot to me. Uh, we're going to probably get that next series started as soon as possible. And if you guys have made it this far, please do me a favor. Leave that thumbs up. If you somehow haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.